afternoon and a welcome to everyone throughout the Wind Television Network to Warrnambool Racing Club's three-day May Carnival. It's been fantastic. This is the third day. Features the grand annual steeplechase. Also the uh, Dulux Cup coming up very shortly. And to help us out today, it's been magnificent weather-wise. The rain's held up. Teddy Ryan, good afternoon. Welcome along. Yeah, well, thank you, Glenn. Once again, I've grown another couple of feet every time I come down to Warrnambool. I've seen taller than you. And Still a beautiful atmosphere. I here. think this grey box I'm standing on is helping greatly. <laughs> and believe you me. But it's been fantastic days racing as per the last two days. And the credit of the club, I had to walk around before, Glenn, and uh, you cannot move on the course. I'm not taking no matter where you go, you cannot move on the course, which is terrific. You can see the shots there of all the people. They're having a great day. The weather has bypassed the race course, uh, which has been fantastic for the three days. And actually, out in the crowd, we've got Kelly Russell joining us this afternoon. Hi, Kelly. How are you? Hi, Glenn. We're having a, a great time here. It's been a glorious day at the races. We've met some very interesting people, and we'll be having a chat to them later in the day. Thank you very much. And you know what, Titty? I'm glad I'm not a girl. I don't have to hold on to my hat. Well, I, all I want to worry about is hanging onto my hair at the moment. Not the wig, not the wig. No, what's left, I mean. <laughs> well, we're going to have a great day. Um, we'll be replaying the grand annual Steve Chase a little later on. It was absolutely fantastic. There's our captain, Alan Adamson, up there in a wind television helicopter, having a shot uh, from the air of all the, the track. It's a pretty amazing spot here in Warrnambool. I tell you what, the people come from far and wild. Uh, in fact, I've just met a cousin of mine who I haven't seen for over 30 years. Let's give him my age away now. But... Uh, into him here at Warnable. I didn't think you were born then. <laughs> I wasn't really. I must have, money or something, did you? <laughs> must have made a mistake somewhere. <laughs> There's the, the shot of the car park. The cars go all over the place, right out the back at Grantis Paddock and Briley Paddock. And uh, just to get a good view of the, the races here during the three-day carnival, there's always plenty of stories. In fact, uh, you might have one on the cup coming up already. Yes, what's happening, uh, Jimmy Serger, young Jimmy Serger, the apprentice, uh, is battling to make the weight to 51. And last time you heard, it was a kilo and a half over. There could be a change of brighter. And as soon as I'm uh, completed on air here in a moment, uh, Glenn, I'll whip down and find out there is a change of rider, or Jimmy's OK to ride him. Certainly. Well, it was a change of rider in the first race today, and uh, young David Taggart took over the ride from uh, young Brett um, Preble, and he got the win. Yep. <laughs> that's, a lot, that's it? the way it goes. Gavin Eads, look at Group 1 Gav in Sydney. It's an incredible thing. He jumps on these horses that either nobody wants a ride or he gets a last minute ride and he keeps winning. And here we have the weather up on the screen for you. Isolated showers, a fresh star west we wind. Uh, track is slow, temperature 14 degrees. Um, but it's been good. The sun's been shining most of the day, actually. There's been no showers as yet. Fingers crossed it will stay that way and uh, we'll stay dry. But I've got my Broly ready. Have you got yours on the side? Uh, I've got mine in the car, which is back in Melbourne. It's not going to help very much, Glenn, but uh, I think it's flying right across this blue sky up above. Terry O'Sullivan had the first winter day and left us out. Thanks very much, Terry. Why are we talking to him? Well, he's from Stall. Everyone knows Terry from Stall. He's a, a brilliant trainer. He's done pretty well and usually gets a winner down here at Warrnambool. Well, he's got a couple in the backyard. I wouldn't mind. I stocked as one that uh, comes to mind immediately. Yes. A very good galloper. Pay the Kings ran, uh, I think, third in the one game yesterday. Mm -hmm. Very he's, good trainer, Terry. He's had a good run. It's all that air up there, too. All yeah. that southwest area. And well, they, they go fast at Stall. You know, we know from the Stall gift plan. <laughs> <laughs> we do. It brings back many memories, My in fact. Word. Well, we've had uh, a few races run and won so far today. And uh, just reminding you that we'll replay race four today, which was the amazing grand annual. You, you just have to sit to your seats to see this. It was oh, one of the brilliant. best grand annuals absolutely. I've ever seen, wasn't it? Oh, absolutely brilliant. And uh, when you hear the interview with the jockey later, he was just ecstatic. And he got over a couple of speeding fines, as He'll explain as well getting down here for a start. And it was a, just one of those homegrown, like a homemade pie, you could call it. Everybody was in on the act. Absolutely. Brilliant. All right, well, let's go back to race one today. And it was the Sinclair Wilson Interstar Home Loans two-year-old handicap the turn a little over 400 to go likely lad just the leader from flying challenge in behind the mr smith another promise running on with extended warranty they've both swung wide into the straight here likely lad stays to the inside little length and a half running second flying challenge running on mr smith another promise out wide and royal ovation 150 to go likely lad the leader he skipped about three or four lengths in front uh, open the hatch finishing fairly well but it's all likely lad hard up against the inside rail goes on to win well likely lad first uh, second open the hatch and third Mr Smith they were followed by Royal Ovation in behind those to finish then was Queen's Dream another John ran on after an early check in the race followed by another promise then extended warranty well back was Queen's Dream followed by Meekery Manor towards the end of Persian Lake to then uh, came tiring badly their flying challenge and the last couple logic prevails and uh, back there with it Calcutta Spirit
And now to the totes on the first event from Warnable, Sinclair and Wilson Interstar Home Loans two-year-old handicap. And it was a lucky day for David Taggart who replaced Brett Preble on the winner number eight, Likely Lad, returning $10.90 and $3 for the place. Second number nine, Open the Hatch, $13.30. And third number 11, Mr. Smith, $5 even. The Quinella, $297.60. And the trifecta, $8,282.40. Race two on the card, the Yolumba Class 2 Handicap, first division, will be run over 1,400 metres. Start at the turn end, I am a Lekman, straightened up five lengths still. Physical Affair is second, Corinna have it holding down third, and then suit the office, but I am a Lekman down to the 200. It's been in front all the way, I am a Lekman holding a four-length break on Physical Affair, and then Corinna have it in third placing, and Viterbank down the outside. I am a Lekman getting a little tired, but he's got plenty in hand from Corinna Habit. I am a Lekman walking the last bit, but I am a Lekman all the way. Beats Corinna Habit a link. Third placing goes to Physical Affair. A break in the field then to our Grey Lass, followed in then by Suit the Office. Vitamank struggled in from Angel Gabe. Heroes Lass. Uh, some very tired horses towards the end of the field here. Step to Glory amongst the tail enders, followed by Just Watch and Aki Tram. And the winner in race two, the Alumba Class 2 Handicap. I am a leg man, returning $7.90 and $2.40. Second number two, Corinna Habit, $1.80. And third number 12, Physical Affair, returns $2.80. Quinella, $23.30. And the trifecta, $478.40. Of course, that was Jocker Bailey who uh, trained that one, a local trainer from Warrnambool. Coming up now is race three, the Alumba Class 2 Handicap, second division, over 1,400 metres. Billingsford starting a run and then Tank Guard, uh, who's spotting the leaders about six lengths, coming around the turn and swooping love of the widest runner. Lost Legionnaire sticks close to the inside rail and corners beautifully. Led four lengths now from Killarney Mac. Out wider, easy rider battling. Kanga Jack getting up on the fence. Uh, deep out is Billingsford Tank Guard, but it's all Lost Legionnaire in the last 100 metres. In that fast lane against the rail, well clear of Kanga Jack in second. Easy Rider battling it out for third from Apollo Gold. Lost Legionnaire easily. One of the best part of four from Kanker Jack second. Easy Rider is third out wide from Apollo Gold, Tank Card, Billingsford. Then Mount Fuji followed by Swooping Love down the outside. Kalani Mac well back from Willie Go Bung and then a break in the field to Ivory Bounty who uh, seemingly didn't handle the going. It struggled in and reassert last of all. And to the totes now on race three the Ulumba Class 2 Handicap Second Division and the winner number five Lost Legionnaire written by Camperdown's nifty Neville Wilson and trained by the former Geelong Captain Mark Bairstow returns $9.10 and $2.50. Second number eight Kanga Jack $2.80. Third number seven Easy Rider $3.30. Quinello $50.20 and the trifecta $989.50. Race four on the card is the Healthy Diet Triad Grand Annual Steeplechase, which will replay in its entirety a little later in the telecast. So we'll move on to race five, the Western Region Retrovision Class 4 Handicap, over 1,700 metres. They're at the 400 metre mark now, and whipping around the outside, Fact or Fiction, who's had a lovely trail behind them, dashes to the lead, Brave Major, whose led has found nothing, and Fact or Fiction led, Rockton Express coming out after it, the danger. Uh, Brewster Road is coming to the outside, Bunari's finishing well, Fact or Fiction inside the 200, the leader, Bunari coming after it, Rockton Express gone, Brewster Road is right out under the roses, but it's Fact or Fiction down in front, Fact or Fiction from Bunari, and Brewster Road out wide and wide apart here. They hit it on the inside. Fact or Fiction has won it. Fact or Fiction, not sure about the miners. Bunari and Rockton Express, who's out wide. Pay tomorrow ran on OK from well back and Vic Noble came from last for about fifth. Rockton Express weakened, so did Brave Major. A gap then to Crown Coup, Ritual Dance, Whelan, Snowview and towards the tail end of the field is Sazerac and Bright Fred. And to totes now on race five, the Western Region Retrovision Class 4 Handicap. And the winner, number two, Fact or Fiction, paid $3.90 and $1.60. Second, number eight, Brewster Road, $2.10. Third, number four, Bunari, $4.40. The Quinella, $19.30. And the Trifecta, $337.80. Race six on the card is the Tremont Thoroughbreds, Nairpapur, Phillies and Mares Class 6 Handicap. To be raced over 1,600 metres. Level best, race to the 400. The leader coming up towards the turn. It's level best from Bo Kem. In behind those is Royal Mistress. She's bolting if she can get out. Does so now. Out and after the leader. And then Peladora wide out, followed by out deep rows of Oakbank. Level best the leader. Royal Mistress coming at her at the 200 metre mark. And they're clear of Logan's Beach, Dusty Island, then Peladora. Level best against the inside, the leader. Royal Mistress dying on a run. Logan's Beach down the outside. Level best is in front. Logan's Beach coming at level best. Level best hard ridden to the line. Oh, very close. Might be level best a nose on the post from Logan's Beach in a close go. 
Third placing going to Royal Mistress, and they were followed further back by Taking Over and Dusty Isle. Then Rose of Oakbank down the outside from Bo Kim Peladora. A gap to Grey Zip who raced wide, never in it. And uh, back at the end were Marianella, Paydan, and a long last Domont. And in fact, once the photo came out, it went to number 13, Logan's Beach, which is trained locally, named after a local beach here, which is very famous for its whales. And uh, Dougie Bruce trains that horse. Eddie Casso is the rider. Returns $10.40 and $3.20. Second, number seven was level best, $2.00. Third, number two, Royal Mistress, $2.60. Quinella, $29.40. And the trifecta, $507.90. Quite nice if you can get it. In fact, if you keep backing the locals, you would have been doing pretty well so far today. All right, we'll be back shortly. Just before we go, I must remind you, back in 1882 here, the Grand Annual got underway with the smallest field on record. In fact, there were only two horses in it. Uh, Aslan Gaboff, ridden by Tommy Corrigan, defeated the only other starter, Sparkle. And uh, Aslan Begoff was two to one on. Nice little favourite. <laughs> All right, we'll be back straight after this break and we'll go through the Grand Annual and talk about that just as we lead into the Dulux Cup. <laughs> It's not the three wise monkeys, I can tell you. Greg, <laughs> Greg Miles has just joined us, so of course our race caller today. Good to see you, Greg. Yeah, lovely to be here again, Glenn, absolutely. And that grand annual today, wasn't it fantastic? Well, it's a race, I think, that uh, there's going to be a lot of hard luck stories come out of it. I think if Light Hand had have stayed on his uh, feet, it might well have been a different situation. Paddy's Possum was another one, and they both went at the same position. But a race that will uh, long be remembered, because it was just so thrilling, the finish. Yep, well, we'll look forward to your call a little later on. It was brilliant too, by the way. And uh, I better let you get up and get ready for the okay, cup, Glenn. Yep, looking All right. Thanks, Greg. And the field now for the Warrnambool Cup. We have uh, number one, Toil. Two, Placido or Placido. Depends where you're born, I suppose, Ted. <laughs> I think Placido sounds better than Placido. I think, I don't know what the... That's a terrible pronunciation. Placido <laughs> Domingo. I think Placido is better off the tongue, in my opinion. Uh, well, we're we'll going to that in detail when they come out. Also, we've got Force Toss, the Hamilton Cup winner, Big Baron, Richard Cranium has been scratched. Gega Bar, Pax Matt Will, Battle Hawk, Yanko Glen. As we turn the page, we go into number 10, which is Sondheim, then Athapaskan Miss, Grey Alex, I'm Value, Fat City Fellow, I'm not saying anything, Talahini, Star Striker, Opposing Miracle, and Oh Lord. Now, Opposing Miracle has been scratched as well, and Oh Lord gets a run with Peter Nucky on board. So that's the field for the Warnable Cup. And as you can see, we'll have a quick look at the update. And uh, number three is $6.30 and $2.40 is Force Toss with Damien Oliver. And that's going to have a, a very good show. I think also in the market is number six, Giga Bar with Brett Pribble on board, trained by uh, Mr. Ma. Um, and there you have the tape. So I hope you enjoyed having a quick look at those. We'll go into detail. What's happening in the boogies, mate? You've got a, a right, quick look at that? Right, interesting. Force Toss, early markets, was just under uh, each way odds. Now it's had to double its opening quote, despite the fact that Damien Oliver's aboard. But the one they've come for, uh, betting-wise, is Battle Hawk, one trained by Megzi Elkington down at Mount Moriac as they start to move into the uh, mounting yard now. Yeah, well, actually, nifty Neville Wilson from Camperdown's on it. And, of course, uh, if anyone's going to win on this track, Neville Wilson will. Yeah, the top one's got a lot of weight, uh, 58 kilos, and uh, we had a talk to Derees, which we'll have a chat about later, but uh, he does look very, very well. He's a good, honest fellow for toil, and uh, be a welcome change of luck for Jimmy Houlihan. And speaking of Jimmy Houlihan, uh, you spoke with him a bit earlier today, so let's have a look at that interview now. Well, Jim, due to two uh, tragic circumstances yesterday, a lot of people are saying about jumping. I feel I'm a great jumping fan, and I know you are, and horses love to jump, don't they? Yeah, there's a majority of them do. There are odd ones that don't. And uh, the ones that don't, well, you don't ask them because, you know, unless they're happy in what they're doing, it's no use asking them. They can't be successful. This horse that I lost yesterday, he loved it. And he was extremely good at it. You see, he was only, he was stuck flat racing on class three. He couldn't get beyond that. And probably you'd have never heard of him. Many people would have never heard of him had he not been jumping. Uh, he got into jumping, loved it, very good at it, and he got right to the top. Uh, I'm, I'm sad, I'm sad for the horse, but life goes on and we just got to go on. Yes, as you said, Jimmy, a lot of people are saying, do you think he had too much weight? Was he weighted reasonably well, do you think, for his performance of 69 and a half? Well, he was going to prove them uh, the handicapper right, wasn't he? He was going to win. And uh, it's just a bit of a mishap and that happens in life. You get that sometimes you're driving a car, you get it when you're yes. anywhere. You, know, you can just have a bit of a mishap and that's it. Unfortunately, he had one. It's only a minor thing, but, it, you know, it was bad. It killed him. 
you know. Had he just right, had his neck just a little bit to the side, he wouldn't have broke his neck and he just got up and walked away. One of the biggest tragedies I find, Jim, is the adverse publicity given by the media. Yeah, some of them are pretty cruel in what they say and what they do. And there's not a lot of fact in it either. It's, you know, it's not true. Uh, anyway, we just got to wear it, haven't we? Jimmy, and also you're going to bury the horse here on the track at Warrnambool? Yes, the owner has made arrangements for him to be buried here and I'm very pleased about that. Uh, I was a bit upset yesterday and I left the ground pretty early without doing anything like that, but the owner stayed on. And thanks very much to Warrnambool, they are going to do that and I'm very pleased about it. Thank you, Jim, and all the very best. Jim Houlihan there, and we'll be right back with the running of the Hammonds ICA Dulux Warrnambool Cup right after this break. Warnable for the running of the 1995 Warnable Cup and uh, there we have on screen number one Toil, the New Zealander with uh, Ballarat's Therese Payne in the saddle. 58 kilos, barrier 15 is going to be a lot against this horse. He's been very consistent and a great gallop will be beside for your money. And number two is Placido, Danny Barrett. Placido, what we call it? <laughs> okay, Placido, Danny Brayton. Uh, Danny's a bit worried about it, even though he's drawn he thinks well in 16 that the horse will try and duck down towards the inside. Force toss is number three, Damien Oliver in the saddle. Must be very hard to beat. Won the Hamilton Cup in similar conditions, and uh, he's the one to beat. Damien Oliver Board, nicely bred, uh, nicely drawn, I should say, in barrier eight. And number four, Big Baron, and Danny Nicolick. Just the one I like, Big Baron. He's come in, uh, going out a couple of points in the uh, betting, but he's in with 56, and he's got Barry 11, but I think he's going to be very, very hard to beat. Scratch number five. Number six is Gegabar, Brett Pribble. A lot of money for this one. Drawn nicely, barrier one, well on your weights. 54 and a half, very hard to beat. Robbie Scarlett. It is to ride number seven, Pax Matt Will. A little bit inconsistent for mine. A couple of good runs, two starts ago, but I thought a very poor run behind Regal Half at Caulfield. And Megzi Al Al Alkington from Mount Morag has Battle Hawk with Nefty Neville Wilson. This was a very, very big run. We must remember this is one of the favourites for the Victoria Derby only last year, and it's going to be very, very hard to toss Battle Hawk. Absolutely, he's one of my favourites. Yanko Glenn is number nine, and Michael Hegney. Well, not on uh, performance of the Kerrang last night. I won the Kerrang Cup admittedly and fifth in the Albury Cup, but I think the others are better. Number 10, Sondheim with Jason Patton. Well, once again, another uh, horse that was well up in Derby uh, contention only last year, but it's a uh, very, very big odds with the bookmakers. Vladimir Jurek, who won on the Wongoon the other day, and number 11, Athapaskan Miss. Uh, you've been starting that one up, haven't you? <laughs> That's for sure. I'm glad you got it, not me. Uh, ran third at James City at, um, at a midweek meeting at Sandown uh, on a dead track, but I doubt it very much in this field. And number 12, Grey Alex, Steve Baster. A lot of money for this horse, believe you me. It's only uh, just over each my odds in the uh, bookmaker's ring. Stephen Baster riding beautifully at the moment, well in on weights at 51. And Jim Searchy, who's riding one over, one over from his specified weight of 51, is on number 13, I am value. Yes, last uh, winner of the Sananat Cup over 2,000, but uh, I think the others are much better. Number 14, Fat City Fellow with Alan Peterson. I don't think it's right out of the event, Fat City Fellow, although he's very, very big odds downstairs. Alan Peterson, I feel, will give him every chance, but I think the others may be a shade better. Young Ballarat apprentice Andrew Payne from the famous Payne family on Tallahini, number 15. Yeah, last start winner at Warwick, Nabil Glenn, but uh, before, before that, sixth at Sananat and fifth at Stall, doesn't rate very highly. David Taggart, who's also riding one over from the 51 that was uh, first set. He's on 52 today on number 16, Star Striker. Two starts ago was a very big run at uh, Caulfield when it ran fourth behind Swift Talent on a heavy track. Now, this could be an outsider with long odds and uh, a rough chance in the race, although very, very badly drawn. Number 17 was scratched and number 18, oh Lord, Peter Nucky. Well, once again, you've got to look at wet track form here today and uh, we're looking at horses from Mornington and also Warnable. And uh, oh Lord, um, it was trained out there early, but Conran's got it at Flemington now. It won at Mornington on a heavy track last start. Uh, although big odds, a rough outside chance. Well, he looks all right on screen there, Ted. Yes, my word. Like most of them, actually, when they're yeah. ready for a cup, they all come up to their best because they're trained to come to their peak at that particular time. And uh, they'll be getting underway very shortly. Now we'll have a quick look at the uh, TAB then. We can see that number four, number three has gone into $5.70 now. Force toss 
doing pretty well. Uh, we move down to list number six, which is Gegabar, also favoured at $7.40. Number eight, Battlehawk has come in too at $6. That's come right in. Number 12 is also in the market, as you can see, Grey Alex. Uh, the one they backed. I don't know where it's come from or no. where the money's come from, but someone knows something about it, Grey Alex, it's because seven. it's been very heavily backed. Absolutely. Into $7.80, Grey Alex and Stephen Baster on board, trained at Cranbourne. So uh, that'd be one to keep an eye out for. But uh, I like Force Toss and Battlehawk, and of course, I suppose you can't leave that uh, big baron like you like. Well, uh, it's a very, very tough race, as they always are, these Warnable Cups. Uh, like Posito won well last year, the year before, Roddy Griffiths won on uh, one of Ray Hutchins. I think it was something I favoured boy or favoured bay or something or favoured bay was a sire yeah i think it was favoured boy that remember back to the hamilton cup when it savaged the other horse i think it was double gin that year exactly and came out and won the warnable cup here and i remember um ray hutton saying he reckons the only thing about these three-day meetings ted is to keep the jockeys on the straight and narrow but yeah. rodney Griffiths couldn't have ridden it better absolutely actually speaking of placido uh, it won the cub handicap on tuesday last tuesday which was over 1700 meters it was a runner-up last year so uh, if you can win to get the cup today it'd be pretty amazing effort well as i said very briefly on uh, before we went down to the runners with placido danny burton came up in the three years train this morning and he was explaining that the barrier now wasn't against him because of the condition of the track but he was worried about the horse because he likes ducking down to the inside but if you have a look all the winners today have been in the first three or four yeah. and now, most of the leaders are one now you spoke to a couple of jockeys early on today let's have a look at them well, Danny Placido, you couldn't ask for a better ride again. He drops a half kilos on last. He's winning weight. But it was an excellent run last start behind Sir Boom. And he's a pretty good horse, but never out of trouble, your mount. That's right, Ted. He, um, he, he, he's run his last at uh, uh, Flemington, two starts ago behind Sir Boom. It was a good, real good run. The um, race wasn't run to suit him. Got home nice. Um, his form all this time in this campaign should read a lot better. He's had no luck whatsoever in any of his races. Except here Tuesday, he got the run of the race and seen what he could do with that. Well, Danny, uh, you came up the train with us this morning on the three UZ train. You haven't had much chance to ascertain how the track is. Have you heard any reports since you've been here? Um, the reports haven't had a lot of overnight rain. It should be similar to yesterday, but I didn't notice yesterday they were getting wide on the track. See, I asked for any minuses against my horse. It's, it's that style of racing. He's a horse that tends to want to get in and he likes the rail. Uh, 16 barrier will help me in that stage. Uh, that, that sense I'll be able to be, um, you know, easy to keep him off the, off the rail and um, hopefully um, it can work out from there. It's, uh, it's just, it's just going to need a bit of luck, you know, that way. But of course it's better if the track is firm. Um, I must admit that. Ronnie Danny, best of luck. And let's hope you can make it to it in row on the Placido in the Waterwall Cup. Thank you. But Therese, you couldn't ask for a better ride in tour, but it has a lot of weight, 58 and barrier 15, and this track's a little bit iffy. Uh, yes, I suppose we won't really know till, till we get out there whether he handles it. But, um, yeah, it's a sort of different type of going here. They're really getting into the track, so... Um, he's won on a heavy track before and he had no trouble with that, but with the, the big weight it's going to be a bit harder, but he's been racing in great form and I'm sure he'll go a good race. It'll be uh, very nice for Jim Houlihan too, considering what happened yesterday, which we don't, won't go into, Therese. But with Toil, um, he's a type of horse that can handle a lot of different goings, but as we were discussing before coming on here, it's a lot of difference between heavy track here and a heavy track we'll say at Yarra Glen. Uh, yes, there is. I, I suppose with the three days racing today, it's sort of it's like a plowed paddock now, and you know, I suppose it goes down to who can handle it. But um, hopefully, hopefully we'll, we'll be able to. Well, as I said, you couldn't ask for a better ride. He's an honest, honest galloper. And, uh, but as you said, 58's a lot to carry, and it all depends on which way the cards fall, as the saying goes. Therese, we wish you the best. Thanks very much. There you have it, Therese Payne and Derry Bre Danny Brereton. Therese riding Toil, and Danny is, of course, on Placido. And Greg Miles, who do you think will win the Warnable Cup? Glenn, uh, I like Battle Hawk here. Neville Wilson on board knows his way around the course. Yes. And uh, the stables won it before, as Damien Oliver brings Force Toss into the line there. It's his only ride for the carnival here. Uh, Battle Hawks, my choice here, number eight, uh, Glenn. All right, well, that's mine as well from Big Baron and uh, Force Toss. Righto. Well, I'll leave it in your hands. They're ready to jump. Good okay. calling. Here's Athapaskin Miss about to come in and join them. Got the blinkers back on today. The uh, predominant pink blinkers placed in the Hamilton Cup behind Force Toss, then third at Sandown. Tallahini going in there. Andrew Payne on board. Just the last couple getting set for the final day's major event. Toil coming up into the line. I think everyone would love to see it win for Jim Houlihan. Placido drawn near the outside. Danny Brereton on board. Star Striker will come and complete the line. 
Big crowd on hand. Weathers remain fine. A wonderful carnival set for the cup now. The light flashes. They're off. Great start in the cup too. Tallahanny, Athapask can miss. Grey Alex away quickly. Force toss jump well. Battlehawk riding to here's Nifty riding him hard trying to get across in front of Sondheim at the post the first time. Grey Alex and Toyler going forward. They all want to lead. Settling into stride. Grey Alex finds the front in front of Toyle. Sondheim, Battlehawk handy. Then Placido on the outside followed by Force toss. Gegabar they're very tightly bunched. Tallahanny wide going up. Star striker out in no man's land at the turn out of the straight. Next packs but Will and Yanko Glenn no Lord there, followed by I'm Value, Big Baron second last, and Athapaskin miss, whip them in. So they're out towards the 1600, and Grey Alex carts the Warrnambool Cup field into the back, the leader a little over a length in front of Tallahini. Two lengths away is Toil third, the outside of Sondheim. One and a half to Battlehawk, who's nicely placed fifth, followed by Gigabar. Next is Placido on the outside of Force Toss, one further back is Star Striker, trying to get in a little closer. With him is O Lord, and there followed by Pax, but Will buried away on the inside, one to Fat City fellow, Yanko Glen, third last big baron with Athapaskin miss starting her run round the outside, 1,200 to go, and I'm value as last of all. The Warnable Cup field goes past the 1,200 in the back, and Grey Alex is the leader. He's been well tried on track. He led by a head. Tallahini is second. Two lengths away third. Sondheim on the inside of Toil. Two lengths further back in the field. Battlehawk, who races outside. Gigabar, one Placido, then Force Toss on the rail and the yellow colours and the yellow blinkers. Oh Lord next, followed then Star Striker and Fat City Fellow starting he's run at the 800 deep out coming into it they're followed by Big Baron the outside of Pax but will further back in the field as I'm value Yanko Glenn and Athapaskin misses dropped out to be two lengths last 600 left to go and Grey Alex led the Warrnambool Cup field towards the turn by two lengths to Sondheim Tallahini dropped off Toyle getting up on the inside of Battlehawk who looked to be struggling at the turn and then Placido Fat City fellow Pax but will is weaving through horses coming into it now and then Gigabar but Grey Alex turned for home led two lengths to Sondheim Four lengths further back, Pax will Toil on the rail and then Tallahini. Grey Alex under the whip with 200 to go, holding Sondheim at bay at the moment. Grey Alex is going great guns for Stephen Baster. Over two lengths now in front of Sondheim. And then Toil holding on to third, but it's Grey Alex. He'll win the Warnerville Cup. Grey Alex, Stephen Baster and Len Trelaw bolted in. Sondheim just held second. Big Baron got up for third. Then Gigabar Toil. Force toss finished very wide out from Oh Lord. Yanko Glenn, Pax will Tallahini. Followed by Battlehawk and then came. Fat City fellow, Placido's finish well back from Athapask and Miss I'm Value and last to finish was Star Striker Grey Alex has led all the way heavily supported as we heard in fact one bookie had him extremely short uh, just before the jump, an avalanche of money and the front runner's bias which we've seen so predominant right through the day has certainly worked in his favour and look at him go he was never going to be beaten this horse from the home turn he just lengthened his margin Sondheim looks some chance at the top of the straight but look at this it's been a breeze getting to 2,000 metres he's unbeaten on rain effective going now three for three on a wet track and that's played into his hands Sondheim's held second Big Baron's got up for third it would appear from uh, Gegabar who's finished close up there's your winner the grey, grey Alex. Gee, that old axiom of greys winning on wet days. It's extraordinary how often it, uh, it comes up trumps. Certainly does. It's a bit of a gamble, though, for the jockey when you're in front, you've led all the way, and then you've got to go for broke and hope they don't catch you. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's right. But that's uh, why you put top jockeys on, and Stephen Bast is just that. He's uh, ridden this beautifully, rated it well, and uh, having a bias in his favour like that, uh, he was always going to be pretty hard to run down. It's been a, a real fast lane in the straight right through this day. Absolutely. It's showing uh, around about $7.80 and $2.80 on the tote if you've uh, backed it at home. Great value. Very good value, but it did uh, get uh, quite a bit of a plunge from punters, so someone knew what was going to happen. Yeah, they certainly wanted to be on him, and I think uh, he's obviously been set specifically th for this race. His best forms when he gets to around 2,000 metres would sting out of the ground, so he really had everything in his favour. Certainly didn't. Uh, actually, last time it started, it was at Ballarat uh, in an open handicap with Damien Oliver on board. And prior to that, the two rides were uh, Stephen King and Stephen Bastard. Yes, he was just overhauled uh, at Ballarat. And, uh, I think, uh, yes, Ted's moved out into the mounting yard and he's got, uh, I think, an owner or a trainer. I can't quite see through the light at the moment. Yeah, winning trainer Len Trelaw was an outstanding effort. Uh, Len Gray Alex was very, very heavily supported in the ring. He must have done something pretty good before today. He's a very promising and a very underrated horse. His previous two starts, he's been certainly beaten on both occasions.